miner Alamos is expanding its island gold mine in Ontario. This thing will cost, this work will cost more than $700 million US. Um, the plan is to wrap it up by the end of 2025. Alamos expects the site to become what it bills as one of the most profitable gold mines in Canada. We're joined now by John McCluskey, the Alamos CEO. John, great to talk to you. Thanks for coming on the show. Good morning. Thanks for having us. So you bought this mine a few years ago when you took over Richmond. And it has a, you just keep finding rich, decent rocks there. I know you've been talking about visible gold. Uh, I've seen a shot on your site of a, a vein running through a rock. Yeah, core core from this particular site is is quite spectacular. Um, I, I haven't seen anything better uh, in my career, frankly. Um, but it tends to grade just over 10 grams per ton, so it's one of the oh. highest grade gold mines anywhere. So you're spending more than 700 million dollars US. I think that's over a period of years, and this will get your production from Island Gold up to not far short of 300 thousand ounces a day. Yeah, it'll peak. We'll have about four or five years where it will actually crest 300,000 ounces a year. But okay. over over an 18-year mine life, it'll average about 290,000 ounces a year. So it's um, in terms of its scale, it's it's one of the biggest producers in Canada. In terms of its profitability, it's the most profitable hmm. gold mine in Canada at that point. So I think that's why it was very well received by the street. The um, the update we did to our our three our phase three study from a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, was, was clearly very positive. It, it showed a lower capital intensity, and that was despite the fact that we were going to make the mine quite a bit bigger, and um, and the fact that uh, we've seen fairly high inflation over the last couple of years. Taking that into account, mm -hmm. the actual capital cost per ounce has gone down. The other day, CIBC said investors should be wary of gold miners in general that are building a new mine. Although it said brownfield sites, expansions are less risky. But is that going to be, that's going to be a cloud over your head, isn't it? Do you think for the next few years, what kind of inflation is John looking at here? Yeah, and I think we addressed that very well with, uh, with the market. Yesterday, we had a, an investor day and uh, virtually all the analysts covering the company were tuned in. And this was a, a key question. And we've really gone a long way to de-risking that because uh, first of all, uh, close to 40% of, uh, of our contracts have been, uh, have been signed already. We've already purchased steel that we're going to, the, the majority of the steel we're going to need for the construction has been purchased. Um, so all the, all the key elements that, uh, that, that could potentially um, uh, inflate the cost over the next couple of years, we've already addressed it. We've, we've also been working on, uh, on, on uh, tailings expansion over the last two years in anticipation of this, so we're well out ahead of it. Earthworks are a particular place where uh, mines tend to blow oh. their budgets. And most of the projects you've heard about that went sideways over the last few years, generally that's where they went sideways. Since we have this behind us, that's no longer a risk. That's interesting about the earthworks. Why are they tricky? I mean, I know you're moving you're moving material on a massive scale. It's just very difficult to to predict um, what the full extent of the uh, the work is going to be. Uh, you know, I, I I can point to examples. I don't I don't want to name names or anything, but you know, if you don't find bedrock where you expect it to be, mm -hmm. uh, or if you get down there and you find that there's a there's an aquifer in place or an underground river or something along those lines, all kinds of these things that have been encountered uh, in the past and, and, and ultimately they've led to huge uh, capital cost increases. But in our case, like I said, this is, uh, this is all done. Um, we're, we're effectively finished with, with the, the tailings expansion and we have capacity for all the tailings that this mine is going to create uh, over the next 18 years. So we have a long, long runway in front of us. So I think we have a map showing where this mine is and the Young Davidson mine. Of course, Island is near Wawa, Ontario. Um, will this mine be bigger than Young Davidson? I'll put that in context uh, for us, please. It will be bigger in terms of its annual production rate because it's so much higher grade than Young Davidson, mm -hmm. even though it'll be producing at 2,400 tons per day, it'll be producing close to 300,000 ounces of gold a year at you know sub $600 all-in sustaining costs. Young Davidson 
it produces at the, at the rate of about 8,000 tons a day. So a much bigger mine uh, mm -hmm. as far as tonnage is concerned, but it will produce about 200,000 ounces of annual production at um, around $900 uh, all in sustaining costs. So still a, a very substantial mine, one of the top 10 in Canada, uh, still a very profitable mine, but very few things will ever match uh, Island Gold. Island Gold's grade uh, and, and this new scale will just, uh, it's gonna drive it to be one of the most profitable mines anywhere in the world, frankly. What about m and Do you think somebody might take a run at you? You've got these assets in an attractive jurisdiction, Canada. Yeah, you know, it was, it's was. it been pointed out that, uh, you know, the, the, particularly Island Gold at the end of this expansion, it's going to be the only mine of that scale uh, that won't be in the hands of a major. And fr frankly, both of our mines here in Canada, are the, they're the only two mines in the top 10 producers in Canada that are not owned by major mining companies. So... You know, from that point of view, you've got to know the majors are, are looking. Um, but, you know, we just continue to, uh, to you know, get our work done and, um, and, and build the company, focus on creating profitable operations. And I think that's all you can do. And uh, mm -hmm. if anybody comes knocking, uh, you know, we'll answer the door and have a discussion. But we're certainly in no hurry to sell the company. We think we've got a tremendous amount of value to create for shareholders just by ourselves. 